from now on, and this is, like I said, the most important thing. I'm saying you, but this means I. And when you're writing it, you should put I, because I'm talking about you guys, every single one of you. You cannot make a mathematical statement without a valid mathematical reason to back it up. And now here's the types of reasons that we're looking for. Definitions. Postulates or axioms. What are postulates and axioms? Statements that are true without what? Without proof. And theorems, those are statements that are true after we prove it. And we're going to get into a lot of proving. And finally, given information. Oops, spelled given wrong. I just put an 11 there. Given information. So, there would be some problems where you're given some information. Then we can use it, and we can use given information as a reason. Now, definitions, I'm not going to put down definitions. I'm not going to put those down. But what I am going to do is I'm going to start making a list of all these postulates, all these properties. Oh, I guess we can put another thing up here. Properties, too. So I am going to demand, not just say, not recommend. This is actual a demandment as... Hulk Hogan would have said that you're able to come up with a reason for why you did what you did. You cannot just put anything down. So you can't put like x plus 2 equals 3 and then just subtract x from both sides and be done with it. It's not how it's going to work anymore. I want you to give a reason for everything. I will not even look at a paper without reasons not even look at it. So that being said, it'd be unfair if I didn't give you the reasons, right? So I want to spend some time and I want to give you the reasons for what you do. You guys do a lot of the stuff that you do, but you can't tell me why. And the whole thing is the why is more important than what you're actually doing. So I'm going to start with properties. Because theorems, we're going to, theorems come, theorems go. That's, I mean, we, we just did a whole folded, open folded thing on side angle side, 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 side. Those are all theorems. I didn't prove any of them to you. But over the course of the next, oh, 10 weeks until mid-January when you guys are finally done with me and you can move on to somewhere else or to a different hour or something like that, uh, I'll have this conversation again with you if you're in my geometry classes. Uh, but I want, pro I want proof. I want reasons why. This isn't like looking for aliens. Or you say, oh, uh, uh, there it is. I want to know why. Mathematics is all about why. It isn't about, it's about getting the answer. Yeah, the answer is a big part of it. 
otherwise, why would we not? Why would we do any of it? We still want the answer. But when we're training, and that's what you guys are doing here. High school is training. That's all this is. You are in training. You are training your brain. You are training yourself how to think. You are training yourself how to be a competent person in society. That's what we're doing here. When you get to college, then you start training yourself on a profession of some kind that you want. That's what you want to do in college. You, you want to figure out what you want to do with your life. And I always say do, do, whatever, do something you love because then it's never work. Like I feel awesome every day when I wake up. Well, I won't say that. But I feel great coming to school because I love this. I love this job. I love sitting in front of you guys. And unfortunately, it's been a lot of sitting because if I, I actually tried to do whiteboard stuff earlier today, and this is going to be on the video, so if any of my bosses hear it, sorry, I've been sitting down a lot. My hands can't take it. But I'm having surgery in 10 days, so I'm, 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 I'm on the mend. I'm on the move. I'll be out for a week. Maybe two weeks, but hopefully just one week. Um, uh, yeah, just get ready. That's all I got to say is, just because I'm going to be out for a week, oh, don't think that it's not... Uh, no. No, of course not. All right. Now, properties are essential because properties, these tell us what we can do. Now, for example, the associative property of addition. This is a property that you should have learned about prior to Algebra 1, but it's essentially Algebra 1. Now, the associative property of addition says, if I associate, what does associate mean? If you have associates, yeah, it's a, it's a group. If I have A plus B in a group, and then I add a number C to it, I can change it around, right? I go A plus B plus C. So this basically tells us that grouping doesn't matter when it comes to addition. There's also an associative property of multiplication. If I take A times B and then multiply it by C, I can change it in A times B times C. Now when would you want to do this? Absolutely. You use the properties when they make them easier, when it makes it easier for yourself. If this is 15 plus 5 and then this is or like 17 plus 5 and then plus 5 I'd add the 5 and the 5 together first and then add that to 17 because 5 plus 5 is 10 10 is an easy number to use so we use these properties usually to make things easier for ourselves now notice that there's only properties for addition and multiplication it's because there is no technically there is no such thing as subtraction and technically, there is no such thing as division. However, practically, there is subtraction, and practically, there is division. So, it's a gray area. There is subtraction and division, but there are no properties for them. Now, um, there's a commutative property. And it, you have one for addition and multiplication.
for addition, it says if you have a plus b, this is equal to b plus a. Isn't that just normal logic? Doesn't that just make sense? If you have 2 plus 3, it's equal to 3 plus 2. But the thing is, if you have 2 minus 3, it's not the same as 3 minus 2. Because one's negative 1, the other one's 1. The commutative property of multiplication, a times b is equal to b times a. Same thing backwards. 2 times 3 is equal to 3 times 2. Identity properties. Identity property of addition. What can I add to a number that I get the number right back? Zero. Two plus zero gets me to two. The identity property of multiplication a times what is going to be what am I going to multiply by yep you multiply by one am I going to have to use that yeah this is I'll, I'll put a star by this guy this is one of the most um, powerful tools believe it or not in mathematics a times one because how many different ways can we write the number 1? An infinite number of ways. Because 1 is equal to, say, b over b. Right? b can be anything that we want it to be. So we can essentially transform a into anything that we want to and never change its value by multiplying by 1 it's just how we write 1 all right some other properties um, The inverse property of addition. A plus what is going to be equal to zero? A plus its opposite. The inverse property of multiplication, a times what is going to get me to 1? And we're going to get out of these properties soon and get into equality properties, which are my favorite, which I use all the time. Um, let's think about... Uh, uh, Mul that's an L. Multiplicative. So what do you think multiplicative means? Or at least what operation do you think we're going to be dealing with? We're going to be dealing with multiplication. Multiplicative property, I can't even say it, of 0. What's A times 0? Zero? 0. Now there's something also called the zero product. This is a big one. Zero product property. Since we're talking about zeros, it says if you have a times b is equal to zero, what does this tell you? That one of them is zero. That's another big time property that you're going to be dealing with.
Now, hopefully, some math professor who's been dealing with this stuff doesn't go all crazy on me when they see this video and look at how bad I'm butchering some of these. But what I'm trying to get to you is the idea that, all right, there are na names and reasons for what you're doing. And I want you to understand that because, guess what? The stuff you learn in Algebra 1 is the same stuff that you're going to do in Algebra 2. The same stuff you're going to do in Calculus. None of it changes. Um, we did all the inverses, all this stuff. Now, subtraction. A minus B is really equal to what? A plus negative B. No properties for this guy. Whoops, that's an arrowhead. All addition properties work. For this guy. When we change subtraction into addition, and if I do just a quick example over here, I have 3, or let's go 2 minus 3. 2 minus 3 we know is negative 1. If I say 3 minus 2, I get, and I just use the commutative property of addition, change the order, I get a 1. It didn't work, did it? Because I'm supposed to get the same answer. But if I say 2 plus a negative 3, well, what's 2 plus negative 3? Negative 1. Then I switch these around and say negative 3 plus 2, what do I get? Negative 1. Now it works. So in order to use all of our properties, we need to think of addition, or excuse me, subtraction as addition. And the same thing for division. A divided by B is really equal to A times 1 over B. So division is multiplication by the reciprocal. Because then, all the properties work. If you have 3 divided by 4, or if you say this, 3 divided by 4, well, that's equal to 3 over 4. Switch it around, 4 divided by 3, that's equal to 4 thirds. That doesn't work. That's not the same. So that property that would work for multiplication doesn't work for division. But if you say, that's a little bit off kilter there for some reason. If you say to yourself, all right, well, this is really three times one over four, you still get your three fourths. Switch this around. One fourth times three, what do you get? Three over four. So you those properties end up working. All right, now, equality properties. So let me move this up here a little bit. And I would say that you only need two. Well, you need three. One of these guys, the addition property of equality. And it states this. If you have A equals B, and you have C equal to C, you can add equations.
and you'll get A plus C equals B plus C. This is what I do when I solve equations. I use the addition property of equality. The second one, I will tell you multiplication. Multiplication. Multiplication property of equality. If I have A equals to B and C is equal to C, I could say A times C is equal to B times C. We can multiply equations. In fact, that's an can. We can perform any operation. with two equations. So if you have, for example, A equals B and C equals C, you can say A divided by C is equal to B divided by C. A minus C is equal to B minus C a to the c power is equal to b to the c power. The c root of a is equal to the c c root of b, etc., etc., etc. And you just you could call this the division property of equality, the subtraction property of equality. Uh, I, I don't know what you would call that. The power property of equality the root property of equality but basically with equations you can do whatever you want to with them As, and that's why I always use equations when I solve or I use two equations when I solve equations because then you're using mathematical properties to do your work otherwise you're using shortcuts and things like that and I am hereby making all shortcuts illegal a shortcut is illegal I want to see legal stuff, which is, I'll sh give you an example of that. Um, some other theorems, and this is pretty good as far as properties go. We'll get you, you'll get used to them as we go, but I want to kind of give you a starting, a starting, a place to start from. Yes, sir. We're, yeah, okay, I'll give you a second here. There's a couple more properties that I want to kind of go over pretty quickly. Um, and we'll start adding to this as we go. Because when we get into what we're going to be doing for the next 10 weeks, which is essentially, um, I hate to say, and just to just call it proof writing is to do it injustice. It is to, what we're going to do is we're going to focus on creating properly formed mathematical arguments to prove our points. And we have to have evidence to support it. Well, our evidence comes in the forms of this. Can I go? All right. Now, I'm out of room on that page. I don't know if you are. It's up to you wherever you're at. Uh, let's see. Now, things that we've learned um, so far. We've we talked about um, we've had midpoint definition. So we so when we talk about definitions, we talked about that. But I want to talk about postulates.
We had the segment edition postulate. There shouldn't be an S there. We had the angle edition postulate. And this, these should be in your notebooks somewhere. Sometimes you might need them. Um, we had, what other postulates did we have? Uh, the corresponding angles postulate and that was with parallel lines cut by transversal alright so we've had those postulates we've had a few of those already um, theorems The vertical angle theorem. This is going to be big with triangles because we get bow tie problems a lot. So when we deal with bow ties, we're going to be dealing with the vertical angles. Um, the linear pair theorem. So the linear pair theorem, we're going to be dealing with a lot where two angles added together when they form a straight line, as long as they're adjacent, are going to be uh, 180 degrees. Um, we have a triangle sum theorem. Um, now for uh, for parallel lines, you have your alternate interior angle theorem, your alternate exterior angle theorem, same side interior angle theorem. Those three you better remember. And I'll just put these little keys here. These angles are congruent, congruent, and these add them up, they're 180 degrees. They're supplementary. Uh, now for triangles, we had the triangle sum theorem. We have the exterior angle theorem. Where the exterior angle is equal to the remote interior angles, the sum of them. Any other theorems that we had that you can remember? Oh, a big one. Pythagorean theorem for a right triangle. A, B, C, A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared. Watch till the end of the Wizard of Oz. And when the scarecrow gets a brain and he mentions the Pythagorean theorem, he gets it wrong. So he got a really bad brain. Um I'd have to look it up, but it's something like the sum of the sides the sum of the squares of the sides of an isosceles triangle are equal to the third side. I mean, he doesn't even, it's not even in the right ballpark.
I, I, I'll, I'll have to look that up. Maybe if we have some time, I'll look that up. Um, so the Pythagorean Theorem. Uh, any other big time theorems sticking out to you right now that we can worry about? Not yet? Alright, now here's what I mean by this whole thing. This is a good start. This is what I mean. You need to have reasons for everything. You need to be able to, if you came up to me, and I mean, and I would be the most annoying person on the planet when you do this. You, if you came up to me and said you wanted to change, you wanted me to change your grade, I would say why. Then you say blah 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 why. Blah 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 blah. Why? Blah 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 blah. Why? Blah 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 blah. Why? And I would just keep asking why until you come up with some type of coherent logical argument as to why your grade should change. When you come up and argue about points on tests and say I should have got one point here, I'll say why. I'm not going to just give it to you. I'll say why, and you have to prove it to me. I'm not just going to give you stuff. I don't give you I, I give you knowledge. And hopefully by the end of this I give you confidence. And in the middle of it I'll give you headaches. And I'll I'll give you uh sometimes some boredom. I I see some people their eyes are glazing over right now. I'll I'll be honest, this is not the most energetic and exciting day of your life in geometry or any math class. It's okay. Life will continue. We will all, we'll be, all be good. Oh, there's one other property that I forgot to mention. Just, oh, go. Oh, knock it off. It's not that big a deal. But it's an important one. The distributive property, which says if you have a times b plus c and you don't want the mathematical version of this this says multiplication over addition is is a okay we can multiply over division or we can multiply over addition and we can multiply over subtraction and if i said that to you you'd go what but if i said this a times b plus c i know i i can distribute like a dealer shuffling out cards using multiplication a times b plus a times c or if I have a times b minus c I can do the same thing I can deal out an a to everybody a times b plus a times negative c because that's basically what's going on right there and then it all just work itself out I usually don't like to show this one primarily because if you just remember the first one if C is negative it just ends up being negative as long as you know you can multiply through and make sure that you do multiply through now I'll go I'll draw that line again because I wanted to make sure that that guy got in there now here is I will say the biggest and most important reason why. Let's say we just have like 2x plus 3 is equal to 7. And I would say solve this with using the properties only no shortcuts. Now, what would be the first thing that we normally do? Subtract a 3 from both sides, right? But mathematically, there is nothing that, there's no mathematical property that says subtract a C from both sides. That's a shortcut. 
You know how many times I've seen someone say negative three there and a negative three over there, and nothing ever gets done, and all you've done is pretty much jacked up the problem? If I had a dollar for that, I wouldn't be teaching anymore because I'd be on a beach somewhere right now, enjoying some sun, listening to some good music, getting ready for my fancy dinner because I'd be rich. But if you say negative 3 is equal to negative 3, what can I do with any two equations? This is the addition property of equality. I can add these two equations together. Ladies and gentlemen, this is one of the biggest things that can save your grades and get you to the right answers, is to start treating solving a simple equation as just adding or multiplying and dividing equations together. Because now, I, I'm not doing subtraction, am I? I'm not subtracting two equations. There's c equals c. What's 7 plus a negative 3? That's a negative 4, isn't it? So 7 plus a negative 3 is a negative 4. What's positive 3 plus a negative 3? 0. That's the uh, additive inverse property, where you add the opposite, or um, oh, that, that should be positive. You're correct. Well done. Nice, nice check. No, you were right. Good, good for uh, for speaking up. Positive three plus a negative three is zero, and then that's plus a two x. So if I just rewrite this, two x is equal to four. All I did was combine like terms. Zero disappeared. Now I'll say two equals two. But what am I going to do with those two equations? Yeah, now I'm going to divide the two equations. So I'll say this is like the division property of equality. X is equal to 2. Two reasons for why we did what we did. Now, you might be saying to yourself right now, he is being so obnoxious that he's going to make me write down words for everything that I do. Well, here's the thing. One, if you just add equations together, you never lose the equal sign. Those of you who have struggled in math, th for those of you that have struggled in math and solving equations, do sometimes the equal signs disappear on you? Yeah, they do. What about negative signs? Sometimes they disappear on you? Yeah, they do. If you do things properly, and you, my my father always said this. Then my captain said this to me on my on the ship. He said, "Whenever you got a problem that you can't solve right away, what you want to do is you want to slow the problem down." Mathematically, that's this. Not doing any shortcuts. We don't want shortcuts. We don't get shortcuts anymore. You guys don't get to do shortcuts anymore. Sorry, I don't want to see. This is what I want to see when you solve a problem. If you have 2x plus 3 is equal to 7, neg and you just do this, and you say 2x is equal to 4, I'm going to I'm going to question you. I might even take points off because I'll say this is illegal. And then when you complain, I'll say show me the property that says that you can do that. You can't. And then when you when we go to parent teacher conferences and your parents say, Well, uh this is what I used to do, I say, Show me the property that tells me you could do that. You can't. There is no property that tells you you can do that. That is a shortcut. And sometimes that negative three doesn't make it to the other side of the equal sign. Use the properties. Now, how does that play into what we're going to do? I'm going to tell you. You had that packet where you were solving or you were trying to figure out 
what triangles are congruent to what, if they're congruent to each other. Well, there's reasons why triangles are congruent to each other. And if I just give you one idea, if I gave you, for example, these two triangles, A, B, C, D, and E, and I said C is the midpoint of AE and BD. Are these triangles congruent? And give reasons why you do what you do. Alright, that's your problem right now. Um, that's what I want you to do. I want you to try to figure this out. Are these two triangles congruent to each other? Just given the fact that C is the midpoint of AE, segment AE, and segment BD. And I'm going to stop the recording at this point uh, because now you're just going to start working on that. Uh, but that's what we're doing. That's You have to explain this. You have to argue why, that's, why these triangles are congruent or why they're not. And you can only use the properties that we have or the definitions. I would say you want to use the definition of a midpoint. So you have to know what a midpoint is. If I told you that you have an angle bisector, you have to know what an angle bisector is. Otherwise, it, it doesn't work. And you want it to work. So that's your job for right now. Try to prove that these triangles are congruent. And then each step of the way, give me a reason why.